Today we're talking all about how the female reproductive system ages. A lot of the changes in the female reproductive tract that we see with the aging process are a direct result of changing hormone levels and the number one hormone that changes with age in a woman is estrogen and it drops. And the first thing that I think is really important for people to know is that the female reproductive system uh, in some ways starts in the brain when you talk about anatomy but for the most part in the pelvis we're talking about the ovaries and then the external and internal urogenital system. So if you start um, with the ovaries, when a woman approaches menopause and certainly after menopause, the ovaries dramatically reduce the amount of estrogen and progesterone that they produce. Ovaries also are responsible for the production of half a woman's testosterone, so that will also decline as a woman ages. First of all, a lot of people don't realize that women have testosterone as well. That drop in testosterone level in a woman as she ages is responsible for the dreaded, I don't understand why I'm gaining weight around here when I'm still exercising and eating well, that's why. It can also be responsible for a decrease in a woman's libido. And then certainly when you talk about the other declining hormones um, as a woman ages, progesterone or progestin and estrogen are the big ones. Most people have an idea what estrogen does, but progesterone is kind of like the um, sleeper hormone, if you will. A drop in a woman's progesterone level can be responsible for a lot of the cognitive, emotional, mood effects um, that a woman can see with age. The definition, the medical and GYN definition of menopause is one year without a menstrual period. Average age of menopause in the United States is 51. But, and here's the big but, there are a lot of factors that can go into affecting that, altering that for an individual woman. Number one, her family history. This is not the total picture, but it, does, it is a factor. Smoking is huge. Women who smoke cigarettes are known to have an earlier menopause than women who do not smoke cigarettes. And then there are some genetic conditions and some medical conditions, cancer being the biggest one that would cause an earlier menopause. So what are the symptoms and signs of menopause? Let me tell you, it runs the gamut. There's no one size fits all when it comes to menopause. Certainly uh, many, many women as they become perimenopausal will notice some kind of cognitive, emotional, psychological, whatever you wanna call it, this is from the neck up, um, a lot of signs and symptoms of menopause. Then kind of the rest of the body, hot flashes, they're the most famous sign or symptom. Not every woman will have hot flashes, um, it's one of the more common symptoms. It's good to keep in mind that only about 20% of women will complain of severe or debilitating menopausal symptoms, but the flip side of that is that 80% of women will have one or more symptoms of menopause. They just might not be severe. Then as you work your way down the body, um, our musculoskeletal system, there is a an increase in body fat, a decrease in lean muscle mass, a weakening of our bones, and then in the pelvic area. And that includes urinary frequency, in some cases urinary incontinence, vaginal dryness, pain with intercourse, um, a loss of lubrication, and increased susceptibility for both bladder infections, UTIs, and vaginal infections. Some women will have a change in their bowel habits, Bleeding uh, from the uterus can be all over the place. In some women, as they approach menopause, their periods will just fade off into the sunset and bleeding will completely stop. In other women, their bleeding can get more erratic, in some cases heavier, in some cases closer together. There's no way to predict. Uh, it's very, very individual. And then lastly, there can be a weakening in the ligaments that support the uterus, and in fact, all of the pelvic gynecologic organs of a woman. We call that pelvic organ prolapse, and that just means kind of a 
descent or bulging out of any of the pelvic organs. So that would be the bladder, the vagina, the uterus, the rectum. There's not one specific cause of prolapse. Things that are associated with it, women who have had many pregnancies and vaginal deliveries uh, can be at higher risk. Women who smoke or have pulmonary conditions where they're coughing a lot uh, can be at higher risk. Women uh, who are suffering with severe obesity can be at higher risk. But just to keep things interesting in medicine, you can have none of those factors. You can have one pregnancy, one vaginal delivery, and still have uterine prolapse. The most common symptom is a sensation of pressure. Women will come in and say they feel like they have a lot of pelvic pressure. Um, some women might have to urinate or empty their bladder more often. And in terms of management, it really depends on the grade or severity of the uterine prolapse. There are devices that women can use that can help with uterine prolapse. And then there's surgery in some extreme cases. So it really depends on the woman, her age, her lifestyle, and how severe the prolapse is. It's really important for women and the men who may be in their lives to understand that it's not necessarily about things being the same as they were before menopause. They will be different, but that doesn't mean it won't be as good and in some cases maybe even better. It's just different. So when we look down the road to menopause, it should be with optimism. It should be with an acceptance that it's a normal and natural stage in a woman's life. and. Everyone will get through it, just like we all got through puberty. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.